with that, I'd like to thank my co-author, Daniel Keaty, Charlie, of course, for being the inspiration for this work, and friends and colleagues for helpful discussions. Now I will take any questions. Thank you. Our first question comes from Phil. I think I found a very serious flaw in your research. Oh, dear. When you normalized over a cat's lifetime, was that over one lifetime or nine <laughs> lifetimes? that the current growth rate of cats takes into consideration the nine lifetime effect. And so by normalizing to current uh, observed life uh, growth rates, we, we, we think that we've covered that. Very good. I'll accept that. <laughs> Any other questions? Sure. Andy? So uh, there was a recent report that uh, the amount of Valium that humans are putting into just the water supply one way or the other has reached a point where it's affecting the behavior of animals. So, it's getting to cats. Are we doomed? <laughs> Pretty much, yes. <laughs> Do you have one with you? Yeah. Okay. Um, that was actually a really great presentation. I really liked it. Um, one of the questions I had was, I own dogs rather than cats, and so I was interested in whether you also think this phenomenon applies to dogs. I don't think that it does. You see, the cats must use the sporadic locomotion uh, behavior in order to increase their heart rates. But we walk dogs. We exercise them regularly. So they're likely uh, optimizing their average lifespans and their heart rates through that kind of mode of, of exercise, rather than the sporadic behavior. <laughs> All right, thank you. <laughs> 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 